AQA A-level physics. This is for the engineering option. And this video is about engine cycles. Video number nine, engine cycles. Okay, now this is a four stroke petrol engine. Uh, looking at it, so we have, start at the beginning, one, two, three, four strokes. Yeah, four different bits of it. Uh, and the different stages can be represented on a PV graph. We talked about PV graphs in the last video uh, on an indicator diagram. Okay, uh, the different stages, there's the intake where the fuel air mixture is sucked in, a valve opens and the fuel air mixture comes in from the carburetor. Uh, this mixture is compressed, then it's ignited by a, a spark from a spark plug. And then this ignited gas, very hot gas expands and it does work. Uh, and then the, the spent gas is exhausted, it's chucked out. And then the whole thing happens again. And this is a four stroke petrol engine. So let's have a look at the different stages. So first of all, intake. Looking at the PV graph, this is my indicator diagram for this cycle. Uh, the first stage is intake. So we suck in, suck in this mixture of air and petrol. And we say that this happens, ideally this happens at constant pressure and there you go. So we've got maximum volume now. The next thing that happens is that the mixture is compressed. Uh, and this is an adiabatic compression. Uh, hopefully you remember what adiabatic means. The mixture is compressed and it gets very, very hot and the pressure gets much, much bigger and you have a high temperature, high pressure mixture of air and fuel. And then the spark happens at just the right time, bump, and we get combustion. And chemical energy changes into heat. Uh, and so a lot of energy is given to the system. It gets very, very hot. The pressure gets much, much bigger. See on the graph, the pressure goes up. Uh, and then heat energy enters the system. And then you know what happens next. This is the power stroke. This is where the gas pushes the piston out very quickly. And this is an adiabatic expansion, the power stroke. The hot gas expands, pushing the piston outwards. After that, we need to get rid of the gas. Uh, we get rid of the, the waste gas. We also lose some heat energy as well. So we're saying we are dumping waste heat into the environment or later on we'll say into a reservoir which is the outside air and this is exhaust so this is getting rid of the waste gas so the cycle can just happen again two diagrams here the one on the left is the ideal cycle that i've just talked about the one on the right is the actual cycle Notice they are similar, but there are significant differences, aren't there? There's a lot less sharp edges in the actual cycle than there are in the ideal cycle. OK, but uh, you'll notice the ideal cycle is very, very similar. OK, some differences in the suction and the exhaust as well on the actual cycle. Now let's talk about diesel, diesel engines. Diesel engines are more efficient. Uh, one reason why is, well, well, we'll talk about it, is to do with something called the compression ratio. But diesel engines are more efficient than petrol engines. Uh, diesel engines don't have spark plugs. Uh, and the reason why is because the gas in the cylinder is compressed so much that it gets very, very hot uh, and self-ignition occurs. In other words, you don't need a spark from a spark plug. It ignites itself because it gets so hot. So in a diesel engine, they don't have spark plugs. Self-ignition occurs when the pressure and temperature rises. Now, this is the PV diagram for a diesel engine. 
Can you notice the difference between that and the petrol engine? Can you see that the significant difference is here and that's at the combustion phase here and notice that we assume in the ideal cycle the combustion phase we assume that the pressure is constant okay in the petrol cycle in the combustion phase the pressure increased didn't it here we assume it's constant now I mentioned this thing called the compression ratio. The compression ratio is basically the volume of the gas before divided by after compression. That's the compression ratio. And in a diesel cycle, it is much bigger. Uh, in a, a petrol engine, the compression ratio is maybe eight or nine. In a diesel engine, it's maybe between 15 and 20. The compression ratio is much, much bigger in a way it needs to be so that it gets hot enough for self-ignition to occur. However, for a given compression ratio, the diesel cycle is more efficient. In other words, we get more work out for a given amount of Q in. Yeah, the thermal efficiency is better. Uh, high compression rates, um, you can't have a high compression ratio in a petrol cycle because if you got self-ignition, then you would get something called knocking. And knocking is basically, if and I know cars are so efficient these days, it's very rare to hear knocking anymore, but on an old engine, it's trundling along, then every now and then, bang, bang, you know, bang, bang. And this is ignition, self-ignition occurring, not due to the spark plug, but, but basically due to the uh, temperature being very, very high in the cylinder. Now, not a problem in a diesel engine. In, in fact, it relies on self-ignition. This is how it works. So diesel engines are more efficient. And one reason why is because they have a higher compression ratio.